If you have a dual fuel generator, you need to watch this video. There's something they're not telling you. Okay, with this Champion dual fuel generator, what that means, it runs on propane and gasoline. So I bought this unit to take with our RV, and I didn't want to ever put gasoline in it. I didn't want to carry cans around. Propane tanks are a lot easier, they're more convenient, and I carry a spare with me. If the gasoline stays in your carburetor, it'll gum up over time. So I didn't ever want to put any gas in it, just strictly propane, and the thing has worked great. I've had this thing just over three years, but this past winter, my wife and I left Indiana and headed to Arizona. We went out to Quartzsite, and the plan was to do some boondocking for a couple weeks, and we've done that the last couple years. Well, the first day out there, the generator wouldn't run correctly. The only way it would run was with the choke out. It really didn't run at maximum RPM, and as soon as I plugged the camper in, it would just kill the generator. So I restarted it. I kept playing with the choke in and out. Finally, it cleared up, and it run okay. Plugged the camper into it and we were able to charge our batteries up, let it run for about an hour, it's all good. The next day, go to fire it up, it's the same thing, but now I can't get it to run at all unless the choke is all the way out and it doesn't have any power that way. You'd plug the camper into it and it would just bog the generator down, it wouldn't run. At that point, I'm checking my connections, making sure this is into the coupling, it's locked in there secure. Make sure this is tight on the propane tank, the valve's open all the way. So it seems like it's not getting enough fuel. Whenever you have to run something with the choke out, that compensates for lack of fuel. You shut some of the air off and that'll run, but you don't have any power. So I ended up calling technical support from Champion to talk to them and see if there is a quick fix. Let me tell you how that went. So I ended up talking to a woman there and very nice person. Uh, told her what the situation was. So she said, it only run on choke, correct? I said, yeah. She says, well, you haven't done your maintenance on a generator. So I said, what maintenance is there to do? She says, well, you have to adjust the valve lash and clean the spark arrestor. The thing run a week before at home because I tested it before we left on our trip and now it doesn't run. That's the biggest reason to have problems with these generators, people neglect to do that maintenance. And I really wasn't buying that. So I asked her, I said, how many hours after a generator is new should you do that maintenance? She said, after a hundred hours. Well, I said, I've only got probably 50 hours on this generator. It hasn't had a whole lot of use. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do that. If that doesn't work, what's my next option? I'm gonna try that just to, I can cross that off the list. We'll see what happens. She said, if it still doesn't run right, you need to take it to an authorized service center. Let me show you a little bit about the maintenance issue she was talking about. Okay, on the back side of the generator, there's an access cover here. Remove that. And underneath this cover is the valves. I try and carry a bunch of tools when we travel, but a couple things I didn't have to do this was a 10 millimeter wrench and a set of feeler gauges. Now, I had 10 millimeter sockets take this cover off, and underneath here is the ends of the intake and exhaust valve. So I run around quartzite, I was able to find a 10 millimeter wrench, and a set of feeler gauges. You have to use the feeler gauge to set the clearance on the end of the valves. Right above it is a spark plug. I pull the spark plug out. Since it's only run on propane, it looks like brand new. It doesn't get any carbon or anything. And in here is the spark arrestor. You take these two little screws out and that little cover right there, well, this screen is like a cylinder in there. You pull that out and that was perfectly clean. There was no carbon in there, no debris, and you can take a little wire brush and clean that up. But everything looked good. I didn't see an issue with it. I put everything back together and I started up and the thing run like a top. And I thought, well, I learned something today. Uh, that lady knew what she was talking about. Well, not quite. When I finished adjusting the valves, I started up and it run good. Run for a couple hours, I plugged the camper into it, let our batteries charge up, I thought good to go. Next day, it was even worse. I couldn't get it to run at all. It'd spit and sputter. So I'm still thinking it's not getting any fuel. So I looked online for an authorized service center for Champion Generators and I found one 80 miles away. So I thought, well, I'm gonna call them and see if they have a new propane regulator. I'm thinking that's the issue. The regulator isn't letting enough fuel come through. So I called there, talked to a guy, 
uh, told him what my issue was, and he said they've only worked on a couple of these dual fuel generators. And I actually thought that was pretty good because they seem like they're pretty reliable. They don't have a lot of repairs. So I said, I think I need a regulator. You guys have those. He said, we don't have any parts but motor oil and spark plugs. That's all they stock. So they were absolutely no help. He said, if we needed a regulator, they have to order it right from Champion anyway and wait for it. So, okay, I'll see what else I can find out. I tried running it the next day, still wasn't running right. I called tech support again. I got a different person, got a guy. Uh, I told him the situation, told me what the first rep told me about adjusting the valves, and he just kind of laughed. I said, yeah, I know. I didn't think it was gonna work, but I tried it anyway. He didn't really have any answers for me, but he said, if you need a regulator, they're back ordered, didn't know when they were gonna get any in. And at this point, our batteries were running low in our RV. I couldn't keep them charged. We just moved into a campground with full hookups a little earlier than we were going to. I didn't need to generate the rest of the trip. And I kind of put it on the back burner when we got home. And finally then, we were planning a trip to head out west of the mountains with our RV. And I always take it with. So I thought, well, I'm going to call Champion again, order a new regulator. And now I'll tell you what their actual problem is with this. Okay, so I called tech support a third time and I'm gonna order a new regulator. And for any parts you have to go through tech support. So I called and got a lady and I told her I wanted to order a new regulator, gave her the model number of the generator. And she says, why do you want a regulator? I says, well, there's an issue with it and it's not running right. And she says, what's it doing? She says, I don't think you need a new regulator, although the problem could be in the regulator. I said, well, before I tell you the problem with it, you tell me what the symptoms are of a regulator that's not working right. She said, your generator is hard to start, and when it does run, you have to have the choke on. I says, yep, that's exactly right. She asked me, says, how do you open your propane tank? I says, what do you mean how to open it? She said, you open that valve slow or fast? I says, I don't know, never thought about it. I just open it up. She said, if you open it up too fast, the pressure goes into that regulator, and it does something to the diaphragm, it puts it into a different position from that burst of pressure coming in. She says you have to open it nice and slow and then it'll work. And I said, well, I never thought about how I open it. I just open it up and I said, I've had this thing for over three years. It's always run fine and all of a sudden it's not. She said, I can sell you a regulator, but you're not gonna need it. And I ordered one anyway. I wanted the backup. I didn't wanna be boondocking and the thing doesn't run. But she said, make sure you open that valve up nice and slow. She said, that'll take care of your issues. And before I called her, I read the owner's manual from one end to the other. So I knew everything in there. And I says, there is nothing in the book that tells you to open that regulator slow. She said she's been trying to get Champion to put that in the owner's manual for two years and they won't do it. She said it was solved so many problems, people can't get them to run and they call in, they get misinformation, but she actually knew what she was talking about. So I said, well, I'm gonna order a regulator anyway, so I've got a backup just in case, but I'm gonna try it. So let me show you how it works. Okay, I'm gonna hook the propane line up. Before I even mess with any buttons, I'm going to open this valve up nice and slow. Turn the power on, choke, hit the starter. That's an economy. That's a low RPM. Got a switch for full power. Then to shut it off, just close the propane tank, let it run out of fuel. So after the lady told me how to fix that, I used it here at home quite a bit. I was running a pressure washer with it and a couple other things. I just wanted to get some use out of this thing. It worked flawlessly every time, never had an issue. We took it out with us when we went out west. We were boondocking a little bit and it run fine out there. So I do have another regulator, a backup. I really didn't need it, but that's the issue. And I don't know if this is unique to Champion or if other brands of propane generators are running that same thing. Like I said, we had to cut our boondocking short because of this. And if there would have been something in the book, it would have helped out a whole bunch. So anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you've had similar issues with your generator, 
let me know in the comments and hopefully this will take care of any problems you might have had. So thanks for watching.